Okay, as you can see, the uh, Motorola CB555 is now back together. Um, pile of parts here. So, all of the uh, electrolytic, aluminum electrolytic capacitors have been replaced in it. Um, pretty much everything from here over to this side has been increased in voltage value because pretty much all of these, you know, were, with the exception of the main power supply cap that's here, all the rest of them were either like 25 or 16 or 10 volt. So all of these over here now are all 50 volt. And this one was increased in value also, as well as the power supply cap. Um, and that's a Nippon Chemicon. I don't use cheap chunk capacitors. I only use good quality capacitors. Um, that was upgraded from the 3300 to a 10,000 microfarad. Um, and of course, it's a nightmare change. You know, there may not be very many electrolytic caps in this. You know, com compared to some radios, that's half to or less. You know, maybe a third um, of what's in a lot of radios. Um, they're just a pain. You know, put it simply, a pain in the ass to change in this thing. You know, the ones out here in the open are fine. You've got some tucked down. It's mainly all these wires. This is what gets you trying to get the heat. The main problem is all the ones that are down underneath of all of this. There, there's that's where the majority of them are. They're all crammed down in up under here. So you have to, you know, I had to chassis out in the other video, but you also have to then remove the the faceplate area, not this faceplate, the actual metal structure here. To be able to roll that out of the way so you can actually get into the capacitors to remove them. Um, other things done, I guess you can see there's a there's no longer a gigantic huge gaping hole here. I just took a piece of uh, double sided uh, circuit board, you know, copper clad. Um, that's just tin. That's why it doesn't look like copper. It's been tinned on both sides before I stuck it on there. But uh, that's just soldered down onto the that gaping hole that was there that went from here on up across and down so it's back down to its the size that it should be with no huge hole there the only thing is just the access hole for this plug and to get to the, the test points down in there and then the holes um, other things the wiring let me I have my fingers down in here turn the power off um, if you remember all of these wires here came off of this switchboard as you can see see all of those empty holes now they were all removed I unsoldered all of them that way because like I say with those wires being right here that's 120 volts right there here's your line cord goes out and up okay one side of the line cord goes to the fuse out to the transformer other side of the line cord goes right there to that junction which sits barely a quarter inch up off of this circuit board right here. So if any of those wires had come up here, one could have shorted out. Um, you know, they were disconnected from this side of the radio, but you have to remember, they're still connected to that switch, which was repurposed when the, the guy did the channel mod. So if any of those had shorted out into the wires that were like these green and yellow wires here the guy used for the channel mod and the other pairs that go down on the underside there had shorted out it could have energized this chassis so just it's bad implementation really bad and you know even worse was that no reason to be using tin snips to whack holes in those cans like i said it only took me a i already had the chassis pulled it took me a minute and a half maybe to get this can out unsoldered the capacitor unsoldered the ground wire with the radio up with the desoldering, you know, with a proper, you know, desoldering gun. It was just a matter of, you know, a minute and a half maybe, you know, suck the solder off of the five tabs that pass through, you know, to the ground plane on the underside of the circuit board um, to get it out. You know, like I say, <laughs> I don't know why he didn't do that. Oh, one other thing, if you uh, do work on these, be careful. Um, these are double-sided circuit boards. So you see there's there's copper traces on the top side here, okay? And there's also traces on the underside. And then they have throughs or pass-throughs. So each one of these little holes where any any components mounted, like I say, there's you know a few that don't have anything in them. But every hole that passes through from one side to the other with a trace on either side is plated through. Now... You need to be careful if you're doing repair work on these because it's very easy to damage them. These were 
early. Now these weren't as bad as some radios. Some radios had horrible problems with their the early uh, double-sided boards. It was the thermal expansion. The boards just you know from heat from cooling and heating and cooling could swell and contract, and it would break the pass-throughs going from one side of the board to the other. Um, these these aren't known for really having that problem, but uh, the traces, I don't want to say they're really fragile, but just be careful when you're desoldering because it's not like your normal circuit board. It's not just a trace on one side, pop the solder off, and the part falls out from this side. You need to make sure that all of the solder is removed because if you, you know, desolder it on one side and you start yanking on a part on this side, you could rip the through out and the circuit trace off of this side. So just, just, it's something to just be aware of, to be careful. They're double-sided boards. Um, so, uh, oh, other thing was heat shrink tubing. The guy had, because he had to, because like I say, the switch that was repurposed was this one. So a lot of these wires needed to be joined back together, which he did, but the heat shrink tubing he used looks like it's the very cheap stuff, you know, comes from China. Um, you literally just touch it and they, they, they pull off. They, 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 you know, there's barely on there. Again, you're just asking for a short, you know, 120 volts right there. So uh, I can pretty much guarantee you will rip the wires out of this plug or you'll rip the other side out of the circuit board before you get this heat shrink tubing off here. I use you can get it to focus or not. You can see there's goo sticking out the end. I use the adhesive lined, and you know they're in about that far. There we go, it's focusing. Yeah, you can see it's, you know, and it's a lot harder. This stuff I don't want to say it's hard as a rock, but it's extremely stiff. So, but like I say, you're not going to get them off. You'll rip the pins out of the plug before you get this heat shrink tubing off. So, you know, there's no worries of. You know, in shipping, when this goes back to the customer, this falling off and shorten, shorten out against the 120 volt line. You know, I could literally leave it right there. Not only that, this is a lot thicker. Just the wall thickness. You know, it's fine to be using thin stuff over here. You know, you cut cut a little wire in half. Well, matter of fact, there's a good example. That's where he did part of the channel modification. Um, cut the wire in half. Um, you know, slid a piece of heat shrink tubing on it, soldered, soldered the connections, slide heat shrink tubing. That's fine. Low voltage, you know, th thin, thin walls, fine. You do anything in, when you're in the 120 volt area, you know, or, you know, if you're not just radios, you know, you could be working on anything. It had high voltage in it. But anytime you get around any, you know, anything other than low DC voltage, I try to use the thick wall heat shrink tubing. It's just safer, you know. You stand less chance of this getting pinched, you know, if a wire gets pinched somewhere or, you know, just over years of rubbing if it's, you know, not realize this isn't mobile, but, uh, you know, just bouncing around, you're going to have less problems with this. And like I say, stuff like this, the, the stuff with the adhesive line, you can see it's you know, squished out there. And then also put a wire tie on it. Even if he had just put a wire tie on here to kind of bundle these together, they wouldn't have pulled off so easy. Like I say, it was... No effort at all, these things just sliding off. And the other thing is, they do make tools that remove terminals. He left all the other wires, you know, I've, I unsoldered all the ones off the board, but any of the ones that he didn't tie back together, he just, again, left them hanging. No, nothing on the ends of them, so they could short out against something. You know, And they're right there, these are probably even more prone to shorting out against that 120 line, because they're on the top side, they were right there. So, they make tools. They make terminal release tools. You know, I've got drawers and drawers full of these stupid things for different size terminals. You know, um, and it's not like they cost that much. You don't need to buy the, the expensive brands. You can get little terminal release tool kits. Shoot from the auto parts store. Even sells them for all the terminals they used in cars. These are just the you know round push-in pins. Um, all they need to do is depress the retaining ears on either side to slide out and actually you don't even have to worst case scenario you could uh you know use a dental pick get down in there just to depress the the little ears on either side of that pin but you know like i say just go the extra the, the extra little step pull those those out so they're not you know in there you know i pulled out what one two three four look you're no three one two three yeah looks like i pulled out three 
three wires with ter with the terminals. Like I said, they were just left in there, just bare ends sticking out. So little things like that, attention to detail. Um, and it's not just being neat. That's safety. High voltage, low voltage, high voltage, elect you know, electrifies this. Somebody touches something back here, you know, dead dead owner. Um, not not good. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how else to put it on you. Know, try and make it ba baby simple and speak. Because, <laughs> like I say, there's no call for that. and Really no call for this and a lot of the other stuff that was done here. So, um, I'll get the alignment done, get it put back together. I'll dig out one of one of the 550s just to show size comparison and how similar they are. Because, like I say, they use it basically from here over. It's the same. The only difference is what's over here. So, I'll post a, I guess, now a third video after this one.